few more of these limits at infinity. On number one, we get the limit as x approaches infinity of sine x. Well, if we try our strategy of direct substitution, the sine of infinity, well, does that approach infinity? Does it settle on a particular number? Uh, we may have to come back to that one. So look at number two. Now I think this is going to get even worse. I've got the sine of x over x. Now it's not the same one that we've talked about before. That was the limit as x approaches zero, and that was equal to one. Here we're talking about basically like the end behavior, or perhaps a horizontal asymptote as x approaches infinity. Again, a direct substitution would lead to a sine of infinity over infinity. What the heck is that? To answer that question, why don't we examine the unit circle? So thinking about a unit circle here, understand, of course, that this x approaching infinity, that's going into the angle position. As x approaches infinity, it means that I just spin around this unit circle a whole bunch. And remember that as I spin around the unit circle, I am bouncing back and forth between the number one and negative one for sine. Sine is the y coordinate of any particular point. So I go up to one, come down to negative one, and then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Again, you know, you think of the sine wave graph, and that's exactly what's happening. We're not settling down to any particular number. We are oscillating. And therefore, this limit does not exist due to oscillation. So this one, oh, don't put an equal sign. DNE due to oscillation. All right, so then we look at number two, and we might think that the same kind of thing is going to happen on this one, right? We have an oscillation over, I, I guess, infinity. What happens in that case? Well, I'm going to actually think of this differently. I'm going to think of this as a product, one over x, and then times the sine x, right? Instead of the quotient of those two things, and then take these limits separately or, or think about what happens with the graphs of each of these. This is taking the y values of one over x and it's multiplying it by all of the y values for the sine x function. So let, let's see how that, ha like what happens in that particular case. I'm gonna draw a graph of on this first one, let's color code this. Let's make 1 over x green. And I can do that pretty easily with this one. Make that green color coded. And then we will use sine x as being uh, blue, just like it is there. That, that'll be fine. Okay, so sine comes out of the ground here. And then maybe something like, that was terrible. Right, something like that. All right, when I multiply these, I'm essentially, think about this, I'm essentially taking this y value, which is positive one, and multiplying it times this y value, and it's gonna end up at that second point that's right there. I'm gonna take this y value, which is negative one, and multiply it times this one, it's gonna end up right here. It's kind of its reflection across the x-axis. I'm gonna take one and multiply it times this point here, it's gonna end up here. And so basically what you have is a deleted graph. You have an oscillating sine function, but it's oscillating inside of the graph of 1 over x, and it happens because of that multiplication thing. Let's look at a, a better graph of this, shall we? So here is the, sine, the graph of sine x over x. And what happens is that it's just from, like you can see, it perfectly fits right inside of the graph of 1 over x. So yeah, this one is still oscillating, but as I move closer and closer to infinity, because you can get closer to it, um, we are zeroing in on the x-axis. So this one's not oscillation. This is this one actually exists, and this one's equal to zero. You are oscillating, but you're getting closer and closer to zero equals zero. A special case there. Let's look at a couple more. We've got on example 12, the limit as x approaches infinity of x cubed. Well, I take infinity, I cube it, it's still infinity. This one should be infinity. Nothing strange there. How about negative infinity? Plug negative infinity in there, I get... Well, when I cube a negative number, it's still negative infinity. This is just referring to the end behavior of that cubic graph, right? 
Nothing terribly special about that, I don't think, but we're going to compare it to what's going on here. The limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x. So if I take a number e and I raise it to a power that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, that should get big really, really fast. That should be infinity. What about sticking negative infinity in there? So e to the negative infinity, now this is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, one way to think of this is the graph, which I have graphed right over here on the left-hand side. Here's e to the x. So this time, as we approach negative infinity, we're reaching that horizontal asymptote of zero. And we can also see the one towards positive infinity over here. Okay. And so these are a couple of special limits that we definitely want to know. They're going to come up in particular cases. So write something down for each one of these. So here's the graph of f of x equals e to the x. And if I have the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x, that should be infinity. Just think of the graph. Nothing really to memorize. Just think of what that graph looks like. And then the limit as x approaches negative infinity e to the x is equal to zero. All right, I'm going to switch it up just a little bit here. And what if I talked about instead e to the negative x? Well, e to the negative x is just the reflection of the blue graph over the y-axis. It looks like this. And now whenever I take these limits, limit as x approaches infinity of e to the negative x, I can see that that's going down to zero. And then if I take the limit as x approaches negative infinity of e to the negative x, I can see in the graph that that's going up to a positive infinity. All right, so here, a summary of some infinite limits at infinity. This is usually referring to some kind of n behavior here. It happens when f of x increases or decreases without bound as x gets closer and closer to positive or negative infinity. And we have these four specific cases. And as I just mentioned, that is referring to the n behavior of the graph.